of months ago, I received an email from an unknown sender claiming that they have embarrassing photos and videos of me that they've recorded using my webcam. They were going to share these videos with my friends and my family unless I paid $2,000 into a Bitcoin wallet that they provided. What freaked me out is that the sender referenced one of my old passwords as a way of proving that they really do have my information. Now, even if they didn't have the photos or the videos that they were talking about, that's still quite scary because those passwords, maybe they can use them to hack my bank account or do some nasty stuff with my social profiles. We'll split this video into three parts. First, we're going to have a look at how passwords are normally stored. Two, we're going to look into data leaks and how passwords may be hacked. And three, we'll try and come up with a really good password for ourselves. When you choose a username and a password for your bank or for your social media app, the website owner's job is to store both the username and a password so that when you enter the two in combination, they can know that it's really you and grant you access to the website or the app or whatever your profile is. That is called authentication. When you think about it, if a website owner kept your password just as it is, so-called in plain text, that would be quite dangerous. If a hacker somehow managed to crack the website's database and get into it, they would immediately be able to see all the usernames and the passwords mapped to each other and they could use that data to do some bad things like maybe make some purchases or they could sell all of that data or they could make a paste out of it, meaning paste it somewhere on the internet. That's probably how the hacker got my email address and my password. This is why passwords aren't usually stored as just words, as plain text, and instead their hashes are stored, not hash browns. Hashes. A hash, in formal terms, is a one-way function. In more understandable terms, it's kind of like a black box to which you give a word and it spits out a completely different word. Unlike encryption algorithms, hashes only work one way. With encryption, you've got some data, some password that can be encrypted, and then you can use the key, and then you can use that key to decrypt it. You can reverse it back into its original form. With hashes, you cannot do that. The black box only goes one way. Somewhere between you entering a password and the password appearing in the database, the password is hashed. Even the database doesn't know what the original password was. The same word will always produce the same result. A popular hashing algorithm called MD5, for instance, would turn the following password into this thing. So when you log in, the same thing happens. Whatever you enter is hashed and then that hash is checked against the database. Even if a hacker gets access to the website's database and they see a bunch of usernames and passwords, all they will be able to see are hashes, so not the actual password. They wouldn't be able to use those hashes to log in because the thing that sits between you entering the password and a database checking the password or recording the password, it would hash it again. So it would produce a completely different result. Unfortunately, there are at least two issues with hashes. One, not all websites hash their passwords, even in this day and age, especially the older ones. And two, hashes can sometimes be decoded. Cracking hashes can be done through brute force, for example, using a powerful computer with a lot of processing power. But wait, there's more. Say someone gets hold of 15 million really common passwords. Then they compute the hashes for each of those words. So now what the hacker has is they have a bunch of words and they have their equivalent hashes. So if there is a data leak in some website, once they see the usernames and the hashed passwords, they can check their own little table that they've just made and say, aha, uh -huh, that hash looks familiar. Isn't that password one, two, three, four, five password? As with a lot of things in technology, there are ways to make hashes more secure. The developer who implemented the black box they can add a salt, which is another word, like hello. So instead of hashing a password like 12345 or 102 or password, we would hash 102 hello or 12345 hello or password hello. And that would produce a completely different hash. The password that ends up in the database, it would not be easily recognizable by someone who has already computed a bunch of hashes for common passwords.
it may seem like nothing is secure anymore, everything is totally worthless, we should not be using passwords at all, and that would be a false assumption. <laughs> there are some things that you can do. The key to choosing a good password is to choose something that is unique and cannot easily be guessed by someone who knows you. Because as common as data leaks are, the chances of your password being found out by a nosy friend or an ex-lover are way higher. It is generally a really good idea to have a different password for different sites. I know it can be really hard to keep track of dozens and maybe even hundreds of passwords. Luckily, we have password managers. You can use them to generate really strong passwords and also to store them across all of your devices. Also, if you can, use two-factor authentication. What two-factor means is that companies use two ways to authenticate you, to verify that it's really you who's trying to access the service. The first way could be a password, and the second way could be clicking an email link or uh, entering a code that you receive via text message, etc. I do want to say that if you ever get an email like I did, the first step would be to change your passwords on every single service, every single app or website that uses some form of that password, whether it does have exclamation marks or it doesn't. It is extremely unlikely that the sender has those photos or those videos. It is a really common scam. It's been around for years. You can Google it. You can find the email templates. You can find everything. Regardless though, covering your webcam is not a bad idea. Even Zuckerberg did it.